How did this enigma rise to the throne? Why was he such a cruel leader? And what is his legacy? Emperor Cusco is the sovereign lord of the nation, the hippest dude in creation and a miracle of life that we all know. And today we're gonna be breaking down his full story. <laughs> Boom, baby! Hello, I'm Isaac from Watson Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. Although it may seem hard to believe, long ago, Cusco's kingdom was ruled by another grand emperor, the father of Cusco. Cusco's father was a formidable, strong, and muscular man who had the unique feature of a llama birthmark on his body. When Cusco was born, Cusco inherited that llama birthmark, was gifted half a necklace his father always his war, was taught the family catchphrase of boom bam baby, and was given the name of the city in Peru that stood as the capital of the Inca Empire. The emperor loved his son and longed for him to be happy and safe, so he gave his son anything he could ever desire. But unfortunately, this family would be broken apart. At some point while on a voyage across the sea, early into Cusco's life, the emperor became lost to the ocean, never to be seen again. Before sailing out to sea though, Cusco's father approached someone to ensure the well-being of his son would be secured. Isma, I'm going on a long, long journey. If something should happen to me, will you promise to look after little Cusco? The Emperor's assistant, Isma, of course agreed to watch over the Emperor's heir in his absence. And from that point on, she was the individual responsible for managing the boy's life. Why, I practically raised him! Even though Isma watched over Cusco as the sole heir to the former Emperor's kingdom, baby Cusco was the one bestowed with full control over his father's empire, even though he wouldn't be coronated as Emperor until he received an education. Throughout Cusco's childhood, Isma did teach Cusco the tasks required by him as an emperor, but he would blow off his roles as emperor at times, like in a Disney Adventure comic when he sent a court jester in his place to a diplomatic meeting. He would begrudgingly accomplish many of his tasks whenever they were asked of him, even though, for the most part, Cusco was mainly focused on using his practically unlimited riches and influence and all the servants he could need for himself. Every single whim of the emperor was satisfied. For Cusco, no request was denied. For example, after a traumatic childhood experience, his fear of frogs led to keeping all of this type of amphibians out of his sight and his favorite dish, Mudka's meat mug, became an expected request. He could control anyone, do anything, say whatever he wanted, and face no repercussions for his actions. As the all-powerful emperor who had no family, whose only counsel was the crazy manipulative, power-hungry Yzma, and who seemed to be able to accomplish anything just by asking for it, he became convinced everyone loved him and that he truly was a perfect being. As Cusco grew up, his expectations for his life only grew. Whoa, no touchy. No touchy. And he established a groove to his life he was unwilling to stray from. You threw off my groove. If anything wasn't perfect or up to his standards, he would let everyone know he was unsatisfied, normally through some type of sarcastic or comedic phrase. Hate your hair, not likely. And let me guess, you have a great personality. Cusco would tear down or destroy anything that got in the way of him creating what he believed would bring him happiness. Isn't it great? It's my birthday gift to me. <laughs> I'm so happy. Cusco was a young, selfish, and vain ruler living what he thought to be the perfect life until his whole world was turned upside down. Through the Disney Adventure comics and the Emperor's New Groove, we learn Cusco did have an understanding that Yzma was a bit of an adversary for him. Yzma was willing to cheat to beat Cusco using potions. When Cusco was sick and he delegated her to run Cusco Fest, she transformed the ceremony into Yzma Fest. She often would attempt to rule the kingdom while he was away, and he knew about her secret lab, but he didn't realize she was willing to actually attempt to end his life. On the eve of his 18th birthday, after Cusco fires Yzma, her and her henchman Kronk accidentally turn him into a llama instead of poisoning him. A llama? He's supposed to be dead! Yeah, weird. So Kronk takes Cusco out of the town but loses the emperor before he could finish the job. Cusco ends up waking up after being discovered by a common village leader named Pacha. Cusco quickly blames Pacha for putting him in this situation since Cusco knew Pacha was upset that his home was going to be destroyed for his water park Cusco-topia. In anger, Cusco storms off into the dangerous forest but luckily when Cusco confronts true danger, Pacha saves him as well as he can. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. 
bring it on. Even though Pacha saved Cusco's life, Cusco is still sure he will not stop the destruction of Pacha's home. Cusco arrogantly flaunts his influence over Pacha and can't comprehend why he won't serve his emperor. But Pacha warns him of the path he is going down. You know what? Someday you're gonna wind up all alone. And you'll have no one to blame but yourself. Through all of Cusco's crude remarks and mean comments, Pacha still shows kindness to the defenseless ruler and agrees to take him back after Cusco promises to move his summer home somewhere else. But in Cusco's mind, he was never going to change. It was all a lie. With plans of imprisoning Pacha for life and with the palace in sight, when Pacha falls into danger, Cusco initially plans to leave him to die. Cusco quickly gets into a similar near-death situation though, so the duo are forced to work together to save themselves. Even though Cusco had bad intentions working with Pacha, in the end he does what was right, and Pacha isn't afraid to point out there he did something nah, selfless. Let me fall. Come on, what's the big deal? Nobody's that heartless. On the way back to the palace, Cusco and Pacha nearly come into contact with Yzma and Kronk, who are after them. After hearing the evil duo are trying to end Cusco's life, Pacha tries to tell Cusco they are trying to hurt him, but Cusco still can't believe that anyone would ever be able to hurt or betray him. He never thought any of his actions would bring someone to harm him, but after Cusco tells Pacha to leave him, Cusco finds out he was telling the truth. Pacha had been right. Cusco's egotism and selfishness pushed everyone away, and without his title as emperor, Cusco finally realizes he truly has nothing. Without the luxuries and helpers, he was all alone in the world. For the longest time, he didn't care about anyone else, and now he saw that because of those actions, no one truly loved him in return. Since Cusco's father, Pacha had been the only person to look out for him and show him unrelenting compassion. Cusco finds Pacha and apologizes, and because of Pacha's good nature, he accepts, and they set out to turn Cusco back to a human. After racing to the palace, the duo confront Yzma and Kronk, and when the time comes where Cusco must choose the potion he desires, or the life of Pacha, he decides to save his friend's life. Even though Cusco decided to save Pacha, they are still able to work together to get the potion to turn Cusco back. And with that transformation came another. Cusco was a changed man. With an understanding of the difficulties that exist in the world and the realization putting himself above all will leave him unfulfilled, Cusco begins to right his wrongs and connect with his people. He disregards demolishing Pacha's village and instead creates a small version of Cusco-topia on the small hill next to Pacha's. Cusco gives up a lot of the luxuries of his life and focuses more on building relationships with friends and becoming a better ruler, which is why he is willing to become educated so he can officially be coronated as emperor. In the emperor's new school, Cusco attends Cusco Academy where he must keep stopping attacks from Yzma and where he prepares for the rest of his life as a ruler. Throughout his time at school, he still exhibits some selfish and impulsive behaviors, but he's doing his best to grow, be a better person, and build relationships so that he will never be forced to live alone. As Cusco continues to learn lessons of life, Pacha continues to establish himself as not only a friend to Cusco, but he also often acts as a father figure. After growing up without a family and a father to look to, Pacha has become that for Cusco. I want you to know, you've really been like a father to me. Cusco is still hesitant to always trust him, but he always accepts that Pacha is looking out for him and is doing his best to guide him in the right direction. Not only does Cusco look to Pacha though, but he also turns to his friend, Melina. As an intelligent and empowered girl, Melina doesn't allow herself to fall for Cusco's charm or riches. She connects with him when he truly opens up to her. She lets Cusco speak his mind and confide in her, and she's always willing to help him when he needs it. They get very close throughout his time at the academy. As Cusco continues to consider the well-being of those around him, when his graduation day and his coronation day approach, he actually is intimidated to return to his role as emperor. He realizes the responsibility it takes to lead, and he's scared of the power he could wield again. But in the end, Cusco decides he must take his rightful place as emperor and do his best to bring prosperity to to the Empire. Hail Cusco! No, no, please, don't grovel, I feel stupid. I'm not that kind of guy anymore. Cusco is officially coronated as Emperor, and with that title placed upon him again, Cusco begins to date Molina, make Kronk his royal advisor, his buddy Guaca his royal spin doctor, and brings the family that gave him his new life and new purpose into the palace. 
Cusco gave Pacha's family everything they could ever need, just as Pacha gave Cusco all the fulfillment and mentorship he needed. Cusco grew up without a family, and with all of his wealth and prosperity as emperor, he came to believe he was superior to all others around him, making him selfish, standoffish, and cruel. But when he experiences a life without all of his possessions and power, he realizes how lonely he truly is. Over the many years since he sat alone as a llama in the jungle, Cusco has worked to become a more caring, loving, loyal, and brave ruler and friend, giving him the family he never had. Thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. Today we went through the full transformation of Emperor Cusco from egotistical ruler to kind family man. And to see many more full stories on Disney heroes and villains alike, I will link some of those videos below and on the cards on screen. If you'd like to continue to see more magical discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. And check out my Instagram, at WatsoVideos, to see Disney Parks photos and me attempting to live my most magical life. As always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.